going on guys round two so I ended the last live stream and uh, I swiped the YouTube app to close it because I couldn't figure out how to end it on the app and it deleted the whole video so I'm about to redo it so if you guys have already watched this go ahead and watch it again okay so in this video what I'm gonna do is go over exactly how I lived in my car and traveled the country made thousands of dollars doing it this shit's not fake, it's real. I actually did it. Go check out, go to my channel and click on videos and you'll see um, a video of, of what my car looked like when I pimped it out um, around this time last year. I was in New Mexico. So I'm gonna get into, first I'm gonna get into how I lived in my car, what I did exactly. And the next portion of the video, the last portion of the video is gonna be how I made money how I sold books on Amazon. Um, and then for you resellers watching this, which is a large chunk of my audience right now, um, there's there's a lot of tips on just sourcing, on using different, um, different maps, really planning your route out and being able to maximize uh, profitability on these trips. So I'm, just, I'm gonna condense this video down because I just talked about everything. So the first thing is how do I live in my car, okay? What I did was I took out the front seat, I gutted out the back seat, all right? So like I completely took like the whole car except for the driver's seat, everything I could take out, I took out, okay? So I, I maximized space in my Toyota Corolla. So I put down a wrestling mat um, where the seat used to be. I put down some plywood. Again, go check out the video for like actual visuals. But I put down a piece of plywood wrestling mat on top of the plywood and then a zero degree sleeping bag on top of that. A lot of times it was too hot to sleep in the zero degree sleeping bag. I just had that for good measure. Then I had a knife that I got on Amazon. It's actually like a dagger. You, you can buy daggers on Amazon and uh, pepper spray. So this is like police grade mace. Okay. So those two things and then those, those two things allowed me to sleep, including, not even including the bed, just the dagger and the mace. Um, just peace of mind and then I also the inside I completely um, I, I cut if you go to Amazon again and you can buy Reflectix you can cut it out to the exact size of your windows and then you can what I did was put a black uh, sheet that you would sleep on on the other side of it so a black sheet over the Reflectix and then uh, when you put it I cut it to the perfect size of the window, glued those two together. When you push it in the window, from the outside, it makes your car look like it's blacked out completely. So it looks like it's like tinted. Like you wouldn't think someone was living in the car. And a lot of this trip, my goal was to be very stealthy. I wanted to sleep, you know, I slept in Walmart parking lots, rest stops, um, friends ha outside friends' houses, uh, National Forest. Those are all great places to sleep. And I'll get into the story again about the National Park just because it's funny. Um, you can't sleep in National Parks unless you pay. If you pay, fair game, 10, 15 bucks if it's worth it for you, go ahead and do that. Okay, and actually I will answer questions this time around. Um, yeah, I'll get into that um, in the sourcing portion. So, um, yeah, so I was, I was at this National Park, Yosemite, and uh, I was super excited, pulled into the park, and the sun was about to set. So I went ahead and pulled my car over and, you know, pulled out my cooking gear. I, the way I ate food on the trip, there's two ways. I had my portable grill and my portable sink. You fill this up with water. This is, this is so dope. I'll get, in, I'll get more into this in a second, but this, this is dope. This is basically like a portable sink slash shower. Um, so yeah, I, I, I ate by, I just had a grill. And when, when, you, when you have a stove top, like you basically, and, and you have water, you basically have a kitchen. So you can cook whatever you normally would in your house. I cooked lentils, chicken, rice, beans, you name it. I did, I did all of it. Um, I ate, like this trip was a lot of, ironically, a lot of this trip was about comfort and having a good time, having a good experience. So I didn't want to, while it was bare bones, I was never paying for a place to sleep. Um, I minimized food, but I also didn't want to eat, you know, nothing. Like, I wasn't just eating granola bars. Um, 
I ate very good. So I pull over in Yosemite and they have all these like pull over scenic areas or just like rest areas, I guess, to get out and like check the nature out. So I pulled over and um, was cooking my food and everything and put all the food in the back of my car when I was, or all the um, pots and pans in the back of my car when I was done. And then I was laying there and I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna put up my insulation tonight. So I didn't even put up like what was around my car. Like I normally put up insulation so people couldn't look in and see me. That's why I put it up. I don't put it in it. I don't put it up to actually insulate it. I put it up so people can't see me. And it, it does, it's better for cold temperature. Like it, it, it's not so much, it's not gonna keep much heat in, but like it's, if it's cold out, just wrap yourself up in you know, more clothing or, or blankets. But most of the time it was too hot. So I would turn the AC on sometimes and really crank it. Anyway, this night I decided not to put any of that up. So I'm just laying there and it was the first night, it was kind of hot. First night I decided to sleep butt naked. So I'm laying there, butt ass naked, just, just you know, head on my pillow. It's two in the morning, I'm, I'm dead asleep. Someone comes up and shines a flashlight in my face. It was a park ranger, he tells me to get out of the car. And I'm like, sir, hold on, I gotta put my underwear on. So. I don't even know where the hell my underwear is. Like my car was not organized and it was pitch black. It took me like probably two or three minutes to find my underwear. Finally I went out. And it was him and this chick, um, two park rangers. And they were like, yeah, you gotta go. Um, and I was like, where? And they're like, go up the road to uh, Natahala National Forest. I, I completely butchered that. But it's literally like a mile up the road from where I was in Yosemite at the time. And they're like, be careful when you get there because a lot of people sleep in their RVs there and uh, there's there's bears everywhere and they will break into your car. And this is right after I cooked like steak or something. And so I had all my food, all my smelly pots and pans in my car and I was like, did not sleep very well that night despite the beauty. Um, so yeah, when it comes to sleeping in cars, national forests, not national parks unless you pay. Um, rest stops are golden. Um, but a lot of times you have to be actually traveling to stay at a rest stop. If you're actually in a city and you want to stay in the city for a while, Walmart parking lots are great. If you're in California, that's where a lot of hippie, hipster people live. So there's a lot of people doing this and they'll actually, um, a lot of Walmarts are like tired of it. So they'll, they'll, I think it's that. I think that's what it is. I just think too many people are trying to like live in Walmart parking lots. So you have to go like type in Walmarts that you can sleep in in California. And there's like a whole website dedicated to it. So just Google that. Um, if you, if you really can't find a place to stay, there's no Walmart around and you just want to get to sleep, no national forest, what you can do is sleep in between two, uh, two houses. So this, there's a house here and there's a house here, park in between the two of them on the road. This house thinks that you're, this house is this person's guest and vice versa. Um, I've only done that a couple of times. When I was at uh, Golden Gate Bridge, I went across the bridge. I was exhausted. A lot of traffic in San Francisco, and I just I just wanted to sleep. There was no WalMarts around, and you know, you just never know with parking lots. If you don't wake up super early, like I recommend waking up at least by seven o'clock and getting out of there. Otherwise, the person is going to be like, "What the hell are you doing?" Like wherever you're sleeping, you know, except Walmart parking lots, you can sleep there all day. Um, so yeah, those are the places to sleep. I kind of covered food a little bit. I also, it's kind of grungy, but I would go to Holiday Inns and uh, Best Westerns, those hotels, and I would, you eat free breakfast. You get there before 9.30, free coffee, free breakfast. Just look presentable, be nice, thank the people. Um, yeah, that, that, everyone has their opinion on that. It's free food, they're gonna throw it away anyway, that's the way I look at it, so. It's good company too. Go in there and talk about if you're near the Grand Canyon, talk about where one of the best places to see. Just act like you're a guest. Um, so that that covers sleeping in my, my car. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll dive into the sourcing side of things now. So when you're sourcing on these trips, sourcing is a term that booksellers use to go out and find profitable books where do you find profitable books libraries thrift stores used bookstores people's houses you know and the, that last point I mentioned is gonna be hard when you're traveling to find people's houses this is something I've never done but what you can do is 
maybe post on Facebook Marketplace before you go to a city. Post on there, I buy books. You know you're going to be there in like a couple weeks or you know a week or a couple days. Go ahead and post an ad on there, and then when you get to the city, you'll have all your leads lined up. But this is my experience. This is what I know to be true, and this is what, if you want to make profit traveling, this is what you should be doing. You need to map out your whole route, at least the day of, like the day before. Uh, you don't have to map out. If you're going on a three-month trip, the, the way my brain works, it wouldn't be fun if I mapped out the whole damn trip. Just map it out day by day. So like the night before, you know you're going to hit up San Francisco. What you, what you got to do, in the link below, I'll add this, citydata.com, open that in one tab, and in the other tab, you're going to open Google Map Maker, okay? So you can type in Google Map Maker and Google, it's going to show you the wealth of America. So everything's going to be purple. All the wealthy areas are going to be purple. And uh, all the poor areas are going to be white. This is something I forgot to mention in the first video, so it's good I'm redoing this. You also want to um, this, this, like you just look for activities that wealthy people would do. Country clubs, golf courses. Um, that's Those are the first two that come to my head. I, I don't know. It, like really high-end places look for those and then look for thrift stores libraries around those so you want to open up Google map maker pay attention to the purple areas map out your route relative to the purple areas put dots for all the libraries color code those put dots for all the thrift stores color code those put dots for all the used book stores color code those if you hustled and you and you found a couple connections, you know, on Facebook Marketplace, put those on the list. Maybe a couple college campuses. Go door knocking on a professor's door. Whatever it is, whole route. Try to get on a list of sloppy seconds. Okay. Um, and in a second, I'll cover all the paper. Can you look for thrift stores there? Look for libraries there. Look for used bookstores. Hit those places up. They've likely never been hit by a reseller before, okay? So if you hit these places up, it's either gonna suck or it's gonna be a gold mine. So while you won't be able to hit volume, these are like travel days. These are days where you're, you're traveling four or five hours, but go ahead and stop at these places. I wouldn't make a whole sourcing route out of this because there's so much driving time required. Like where you're really gonna make money is like in the cities. Like, when, when you have 14 places routed out and you, you hit as many as you can in a day. But don't pass up on these opportunities where you're going from city to city. It's a luxury that a lot of people don't have. A lot of people don't have the luxury of traveling and hitting up a hole in the wall, thrift store, in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so my, my experience, and I'll answer your question right now um, about small towns. Um, I'll give a case study. Um, I went to Havasu. Lake Havasu, Arizona, and um, I cleaned out that Goodwill, and that was, I don't know how many people are in Lake Havasu, I don't think it's a ton, but it's a very, very, very wealthy town, it's a boat town, people go there to boat and retire, and um, I think I made like a grand profit at uh, the Goodwill there, so, I mean, they're not everywhere, but when you find, and then as far as it goes, out like the South and really the, everywhere but New England, um, libraries are like a 50-50 chance on whether or not they even sell books. But if you're in New England, if you're in New England, you're watching this video, you should be crushing it with books because the books are so damn good up there. Every library, like even even the, the carts might be small, but I guarantee you they replenish like every single day. And that's a good thing about like, no matter what city you go to, the cities might suck. But if you hit volume, you do you do the things I just said, like you, you're gonna you're gonna pay for your trip, like just hundred percent. Like if, if you just stick with it, just grind. Just, I don't even know what that word means. Sorry. Um, but yeah, no, just there's always gonna be fresh inventory. Like just I don't know what the like rule of large numbers. I guess like if there's twenty thousand books in a city. It's probably, there's probably way more than 20,000. 
just imagine how many get bought and then how many are back on the shelves every single day. So it's just a matter of scanning the fresh inventory. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to get backroom access. Um, so this is my sink slash shower. 100% recommend this if you plan on living your car, even if you don't plan on living in your car. Like I bet like, maybe there's a, there might be like one guy out there that plans on actually living in his car. But if you just, if, below if I can find it but um yeah I, when I traveled across the country I had a canoe on top of my car put this on top of the car and then the, the stream that comes out of here is fucking amazing like like it's really crazy I just bought a bunch of low rank books profit ranges between one dollar and something else couldn't read a whole comment um negative to my next point so yeah in, invest in one of these you can use it to do your dishes if you do want to take a hot shot Shower, a good trick on taking a hot shower is fill it up halfway to yeah about halfway with regular cold water from a gas station they have like these super powerful pumps that's another good place to sleep by the way is gas stations like trucker truck gas stations those are great places to sleep and you'll sleep better when you see other people doing it and semi truck drivers they sleep in their cars or vehicles um, so yeah, you'll sleep better when you're around other people doing it. Uh, you, you can pay to stay at, at campsites, but I mean, who, who really wants to pay for shit? So, um, there, there'll be like a water, uh, faucet that you can just, it's super powerful to fill this up in like two seconds, boil some water, pour it in here and, uh, you have a hot shower. So, uh, unless you're a real man, you take a cold shower. So that's a, uh. That's a pro tip right there. If you guys got anything out of this video, invest in one of these, okay? So, um, yeah, about that comment, the $1 profit, I would, uh, especially, like, if you're already in a situation where you're budgeting, sourcing books, I would, I highly recommend raising your floor profit to at least four, maybe five, maybe $10. Um, I keep bringing the number up. Right now, mine's four, but, you gotta realize if you're going to thrift stores, you're going to lie. If you're not getting your books for free, you're investing your capital. So if you get a thousand books in a month, um, and the average buy cost is dollar fifty, you just invested fifteen hundred dollars in books. Okay, what if that fifteen hundred dollars yields ten grand profit? Ten k profit, fifteen hundred dollar investment. What if I told you that, what if, what if you only invested, um, let's say you, you bring the number down to 200 books, this is a 20, 20 80 law. Um, what if you only invested in 200 books, but you had eight grand profit? Would you then, like, would that change your mind about it? It should, and that's kind of the reality. It's, it's way less effort. How much more effort is it to pack 1,000 books versus 200 books? It's crazy more effort to, to list thousand books. So the, if the 200 books is like, that, that's the cream of the crop. And if you really look at anyone's inventory, there's usually 20% of their inventory that pulls the rest of the 80. This is uh, uh, Pareto. I think, I think I'm saying that right. Um, Pareto distribution. I might be fucking that up. But basically 20% of your efforts yield 80% percent of your results so when it comes to capital I don't, don't recommend everyone because you weren't busy packing up the other 800 and uh, the profit is about the same it's not much different um, the profits actually more because now, now you have more, more time to go find more again you have a thousand books in inventory it's gonna it's gonna be hard um, just more books more problems you know um, I mean, that's like the name of the game is getting more books, but just make sure they're good books. Make sure they're books worth um, investing time into. So, I'll see what else. Now it's time for uh, some Q&A before I hit these last points. I feel like I did that video way faster. Okay. So... Uh, um, one last thing, I developed this dope ass method for listing books. I used to take I used to take all my books into Starbucks. Starbucks has great Wi-Fi, 
and I would list them in there and then ship them at Staples, FedEx, um, Office Depot, whatever. Staples is with UPS, Office Depot is with FedEx. You can't ship the other way around. FedEx stores are great for shipping. UPS stores are great for shipping. But I used to take all my books into Starbucks. Um, it wasn't a terrible method, but I, I had to take the books from the thrift store into my car, into Starbucks, into my car, to the shipping center. Um, with the 10x listing method, link will be below. I take the books from the thrift store to my car to uh, shipping center. So I've developed this assistant. I use my phone and I use Accelerolist. I personally use it. My virtual assistant uses use uses Accelerolist. But basically, I scan everything in my phone. I'm interested in that method. This is purely a result of me living in my car and let me see this question a lot of library sales thrift stores getting books blah 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 props for you doing this on the road like it's one hour of your day like maybe don't go out where there's no one else scanning keep that in mind it's a big part of this business get the books that no one else has scanned yet i just lost my train of thought though i was uh talking about what was i talking about i was talking about sourcing oh yeah listing um, so yeah, that, that, like that 10x method, purely a result of, of me just being tired of, of spending days listing books, being tired of moving books, you know, into a Starbucks or my friend's houses. I don't even think I did that. I never took books into my friend's houses, I don't think. Maybe, maybe a few times, but like, the way I look at it, take the books. There's no reason not to take the books from the thrift store to the car to the shipping place. Like, don't take them into a Starbucks, out of a Starbucks, back into your house, whatever, like, thrift store, car, shipping center. And, like, using the 10x method, e even if you only take bits and pieces of it, I think the most important thing a lot of people could take from the 10x method, maybe they want to label their books, maybe they want to do that, but scan the books in your phone. So once you scan them in your phone, let's say I scanned 800 books in my phone, yeah, I, I could probably fit 800 books in my car. I couldn't sleep in my 800 books. Scan 800 books in your phone. How easy is it to walk to the third floor of an Airbnb with 800 books in your phone? It's fucking easy. Okay, how easy is it to, to truck 800 books upstairs? Okay, that's why the 10x method developed. All right, and it just so happened that it's 10 times faster. So go check it out. It's a little bit more cost intensive but but you're trading you're trading your time for money or you amazon the label pay amazon not with this method we actually don't pay amazon do box contents most of the time so cool check it out I'm like shit right now but this is a uh, it's my refrigerator it's an off-brand yeti it's called a pelican if i can remember i'll add all this in the description i need to add the shower in the description i need to add the um i call that my refrigerator so when I get food, when I get chicken, whatever, I put it in there. I need to clean it. it. Smells terrible. Like, thank God you guys can't smell it right now. Otherwise, nobody would be watching this video right now. Um, but yeah, it, it, like in the hot desert heat, it keeps food cool for three days. Um, doesn't keep a lot of food, but it's. I mean, it's enough. You know, it's enough for. And you, like, space is limited when you're living in your car, or even if you're living in your van or whatever. You don't want to take up a lot of space. So I go to the grocery store like every few days when I'm doing these trips. I did this last trip for three months. Um, like I said earlier, go check out my video of, of me living in my car in New Mexico and you can get a, a sense for the whole, like my car's pimped out. I had my boxes in the back um, for books. So you, you'll get a sense for what it actually looked like, like in game mode. But um, yeah, so that's my second time shooting this video. I appreciate those of you that watched this twice. I'm gonna actually figure out how to how to end it right now if you guys have any last minute questions now's the time appreciate you guys how do i end this all right guys